How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood medical student, and today we're going to be talking about the uh, association between cardiovascular disease and ADHD. I want to specifically talk about this topic because lately we've been getting better and better at diagnosing ADHD, and we do have ADHD, many ADHD treatments available, but over the years, there has been this concern about whether or not these medications are harmful, especially to kids who are taking ADHD medications because of how they're classified, their stimulants. A large majority of them are stimulants. And before I get started, I want to tell you all that um, I originally was going to push on this video, like recording this video, because I'm currently recovering from really, really, really bad food poisoning after eating bad leftovers from Thanksgiving. But I recently came across this topic and I recently came across the study that was released and I really wanted to cover it because I thought it was super interesting and I thought a lot of people can benefit from this information. Also, this study is really important to me because I also take ADHD stimulants. I take Adderall because I was diagnosed with ADHD recently and it's really helped me improve my quality of life. But that that is something that I think about a lot, especially because you know, when we look at other forms of stimulants that are not prescribed to people, uh, if, we, if we look at the stimulant classes, uh, such as um, cocaine and methamphetamine, those are very scary st street drugs that are, are around the same class as things like Adderall <laughs> and methylphenidate, which is prescribed for people with ADHD. Because we've seen time and time again in the literature or even those meth not even once commercials that these drugs that are stimulants uh, that are often sold uh, on the streets have really, really harmful effects on the heart. But as a counter argument, I will also say that caffeine also counts as part of the stimulant class of drugs and we've seen a concern for caffeine causing long-term cardiovascular effects, but many studies have shown that it doesn't do anything like that as long as you drink caffeine in moderation. Now this, this study that I'm going to be talking about today was just released this month, November of 2022, and it's the most comprehensive meta-analysis that's been published so far on the association between cardiovascular disease and ADHD medications. The study looked at, it's a meta-analysis. So if, you, if you're not in the academic world, what, what does that even mean? A meta-analysis means uh, some researchers got together and looked at all the studies available out right now on ADHD meds and its effects on the heart and just group them all together to see if there was an association. It's one of the most premier forms of research because you look at research from all different avenues, all different types of uh, models, and then you're able to cohesively put those results together instead of just one case here and there, or one little study that was performed in this one location in a clinic in Wyoming. Like they just group all of these results together to come with a concise consensus. Now, uh, a little bit of the background of the study, this study looked at 19 different studies all up until May 2022 uh, that focused on ADHD and its effects, ADHD medications and its effects. And uh, among those 19 studies, a large majority of them were cohort studies. And a cohort study is when they take a group of participants and follow them over a number of years. If you haven't seen my breast cancer and you breast, I mean, not, not breast cancer, my uterine cancer and relaxers video, that one also covered a cohort study. A cohort study allows you to see long-term effects of a drug or anything else that you're studying on a group of people. So uh, of those 19 studies, uh, I believe around 12 of them were cohort studies. And uh, the, the studies they looked at comprised of six different countries. So this data is very, very much generalizable to most people. So after hearing about and reading about all these promising parts of the study, I am really happy to say the results of the study show that no statistically significant association between ADHD medications and the risk of cardiovascular events among children and adolescents, young and middle-aged adults, or older adults. That is amazing. They found no statistically significant association between taking ADHD medications and cardiovascular disease among all age groups. All of them. 
This means for the most part, ADHD medications are generally safe and have not a huge link to developing cardiovascular disease for those who take them. Now, there are some things I do have to point out when it comes to the results of the study. The first one is that you, know, you have to know the difference between cardiovascular disease and other forms of cardiac issues. So cardio cardiovascular disease includes things like high cholesterol that leads to um, potentially causing heart disease, heart failure, those things. When it comes to things like tachyarrhythmia, which is a fancy term for someone who has weird abnormal heart bleeds that could lead to death. And when it comes to things like MIs, which means someone who has a heart attack, that doesn't get grouped into the cardiovascular disease category uh, when it comes to this study. Cardiovascular disease is specifically those who end up developing long-term issues in their hearts, while things like tachyarrhythmia and MI, myocardial infarction, leads to our sudden things, things that happen suddenly in someone's heart that can lead to death. Now I will say that long-term cardiovascular disease will eventually lead to something like an MI, a heart attack, um, but ADHD medications were not associated with cardiovascular disease. So what does that even mean? Um, well, one, one thing was that the study could not rule out a moderate risk of cardiac arrest or take tachyarrhythmia, but they also could not rule it in. So that means there needs to be more studies on this association. Another thing I really need to point out is the fact that most people who develop tachyarrhythmia or cardiac arrest with taking ADHD medications have some sort of underlying health problem an underlying heart problem maybe it's something in their genetics maybe their heart had a damaged valve maybe something else happened in their medical past that led to their heart being weaker which led to developing cardiac arrest or tachyarrhythmia this is why it's important although that the study showed that it's generally safe to take adhd medications and not worry about cardiovascular disease that anybody anybody who's had um, previous workup of heart disease, a previous workup of any heart rhythm issue, or if you're just an average person who's never really gone to the doctor and gotten a full workup, that before you start any form of ADHD medication, your doctor should do a comprehensive review of your heart health. And one of those big aspects of that is doing an EKG, which is a machine that sticks to your chest in different points and looks at your heart rhythm. So before you start any ADHD medication, um, your doctor should look at uh, how your heart functions and sees that it's normal before you are prescribed it. Another thing a doctor should do uh, once you do start ADHD medications is routinely check your blood pressure and uh, your heart rate. Now those are really, really important things that a doctor should always follow up with with every ADHD a medication visit that you have. I personally have those visits and a good doctor who treats patients with ADHD will do that already. And the best practice through the results of the study is to continue doing what doctors are already doing because it's safe for the patient. And it prevents anything bad from happening while patients can continue to take their ADHD medications safely, effectively, and um, Outweighing the benefits versus cost is going to benefit the patient in the long term because the relative risk of developing cardiovascular disease is not significant enough for them to stop. Now, the last thing I really do want to cover is the limitations of the study. I think ethically I need to talk about the limitations that the study had. And some of the things that uh, the researchers pointed out is that they could not determine uh, risk dependent on specific ADHD drugs. So they had to group the drugs together because of the way they did the meta-analysis. They couldn't single out a certain drug like either Adderall or Ritalin or Guanfacin. They couldn't single these specific drugs out to test, to look at its risks. Everything had to be grouped together. So more research needs to be done um, if you want to look at specific drugs and how specific ADHD drugs affect the heart. And the second big limitation that this study had is the fact that um, kind of as an addition to uh, that they couldn't uh, test each specific drugs, they also couldn't uh, look at the dosages of the drugs or whether or not a higher dose was related to an increased risk versus a lower dose. So these are avenues that should be uh, further studied 
um, as more and more research is being done on ADHD medications and its effects on the human body. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. I hope you learned something. I definitely did. I found this really fascinating, but also super assuring for people who have ADHD and who need medications to live a good quality of life. Uh, I think this is amazing. I think uh, studies like this should continue and that uh, this just makes doctors more and more comfortable knowing that, you know, we are helping our patient and not harming them. Anyways, I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you gained something from this video. I hope you'll share it with someone who may benefit from this information. Follow me on Twitter, on Instagram to keep up with my daily life and activism work. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. This is Ben.